somebody else come in now? No. Good evening and welcome to the November 26, 2012 regular meeting of the Waterloo Community School District Board of Education. I hereby call the meeting to order. And now please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Now please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now Shanley McNally will read the school district's mission statement. The Waterloo Schools community commits to a comprehensive system of education and support to assure that each and every student will graduate prepared for college, career, and citizenship as evidenced by continuing education, pursuing a career path, and contributing to a community. Thank you, Shanley. Uh, and the first item on our agenda is a board celebration, um, a very good one. It's a uh, donation from the Waterloo Downtown Rotary Club um, of Coates, and we'd like to recognize them now. Crystal Buzz is coming forward, and also in the audience is Steve Thorpe, who um, it was a longtime uh, former board member um, here and is also very involved with the... Uh, um, Waterloo Downtown Rotary Club. Um, Crystal, I'll turn it over to you to give us some background information. Thank you, Mike. Um, we are very lucky to receive a number of donations. The Downtown Rotary Club, like you mentioned, um, is donating 804 coats to children um, that live in Waterloo. So this is fabulous. Um, some will go to our schools, um, and some will also go to some of the Cedar Valley Catholic schools to help those children. Um, and then I'm going to let Mr. Thorpe kind of explain how he got started on the project. It's a fabulous project, and if you know, um, um, Steve and Liz, you'll realize that they have the biggest heart, so it's not a surprise that they would do something like this. Um, but then afterwards, I want to mention, um, we had a large donation of hats and gloves right at the same time from a young professionals group that's with the Board of Realtors. And so I have two ladies here representing them as well tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just to tell you a little about this project, it, it's called Operation Warm, and it's a foundation that exists, uh, was created in Pennsylvania. And it was created by um, a Rotary Club there. And uh, what happened was they read in the newspaper that there were a lot of kids that were suffering through the winter without any coats. And in Pennsylvania, not living there, I assume it still gets cold like it does here in Iowa. And Anyway, this particular guy who read the article went out and bought as many coats as he could, but it was the end of January and all the sales had happened, so there weren't many left. I think they got 150, but he and the rest of the people in his Rotary Club talked about it and thought that it was something that maybe they could do in the future that would be helpful. So they set up this foundation, and in April this year, they gave away their one millionth coat in 10 years. So anyway, obviously the word spread, and Liz and I heard about this project about four years ago and uh, knew that the need here was great, and so we decided that we'd see what we could do to raise some money, and this year uh, has been our best year. Um, we raised about $15,000 this year to buy new coats, so we're able to get brand new coats for kids, and the one thing you might know if you don't know anything about the project, and that is that we have like uh, 12 different styles and colors for boys and girls, so it doesn't look like they were all issued, you know, at the Army yeah. store or something like that. So that kind of helps. Now, for Liz and I, we can identify all the different patterns and colors, but uh, for most people, that wouldn't be noticeable. So 
Anyway, we just feel fortunate this year. We had uh, the Community Foundation uh, came forward to help us, and uh, the Rotary Foundation did also, as well as other individuals here in the school district. And just this week, as we were handing out coats at Cunningham, uh, I would tell you that we received a substantial gift from teachers and staff there to give us seed money to get started again for next year. So anyway, we're glad that we can do it. As I'm sure all of you know, you know, with free and reduced lunch number at under 70 percent, if you just do that time the numbers, you know, you got five or six thousand kids that probably are in financial situations where the need is there. And so uh, 800 doesn't begin to do what's needed, but um, it's a beginning anyway. So. No, but it's a fantastic program, and, and, and yeah. we are so grateful to Waterloo Downtown Rotary Club for all they do for our schools, but Steve and Liz in particular spearheaded this. Steve Thank you. works throughout the year um, and encouraging donations, but then putting everything together, and I've been um, to one of the fittings to see the children come in and pick out their new coats. Absolutely. I, I think I saw it at Cunningham. Yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's fantastic, yeah. yeah, so thank you. Thank you. And the two ladies that are behind me, I have LA folks from Four Seasons and Robin Schrader, Schrader with uh, 20 LS, Century 21 LSB Real Estate. And just to let you know, they donated 262 pairs of gloves, 206 hats, 27 scarves, and 24 headbands, which are kind of like the ear muff, ear warmer. So I'll let, I think Ellie's going to talk about how they got started on their project. Hi. Hi, Thanks for having evening. us. Um, we actually started our Young Professional Network here a few years ago, and one of the goals of our network is to give back to the community because the community is a big basis of our job. You know, if it wasn't for the community, we wouldn't have jobs, basically. So it's always nice to give back to them, and, you know, we just kind of heard about doing it at Men Drive. This is our first annual one. We thought it would be a fun thing to do, get a lot of people involved. I'm pretty sure that all the offices got involved, donated either funds or items for the donation. We had a lot of fun. Um, like I said, it was our first annual, so we plan on doing it again next year. Um, we're also open to any other ideas that people have about ways that we can give back to the schools or back to the community because we want to continue to do events throughout the year. So, you know, I guess that's basically <laughs> kind of what we have going on so far. Are you a partner in ed with anyone? Are we a what? Partner in education, Crystal? And I think they're a part the um, Board of Realtors is a partner at large. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. We're just a, the Board of Realtors, which includes many agents from Cedar Falls, Waterloo, and the surrounding communities. We also had some affiliate members, too, so some of the local lenders, the abstract companies, the title companies, the attorneys, they got involved as well. Great. Yep. Please let us Thank know you how, how so we can help in the future as well and hopefully All right. carry it on and get to uh, uh, several years also like the coat drive. It seems to work very well with that. So yeah, well, and we hope next year we bring a lot more in. So no, <laughs> it, it's great. And just getting it, 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 keeping it up every year is fantastic because there's oh. certainly the need there. But um, Oh, yes, this, there is. Really fits it. So thank you, Robin and Ellie. Thank you right. very much. And please let everybody know at the Board of Realtors and also Young Professionals Network. We appreciate it. Thank We're very thank grateful. You. Thanks again. Thanks. Steve, uh, could you come up once more? Um, I don't want to put Steve on the spot, but I've never heard him at a loss for words. And I can't, I, like Mr. Young just said, uh, what you and Liz do for our community is commendable. But would you talk to the board and the public just three minutes about the Nicaragua and how long that's been going on? And sure, tell us a little bit about that. Three minutes will be tough. I know. I know. I'm, t I'm counting on you. <laughs> but I'll tell you quickly, Liz and I, uh, <clears throat> uh, 11 years ago, I was president of the Waterloo Downtown Club, and Liz and I went to an international rotary meeting uh, in San Antonio. And there was a priest there from Nicaragua and a former Nicaraguan who lives in Texas. And they were there appealing for help. And uh, in 1998, Hurricane Mitch hit the north. Uh, west corner of Nicaragua and uh, we all know what happened you know with Sandy recently and Irene before that and and uh, and so this had created chaos in Nicaragua but what had what happened there was that this hurricane circled for a week and dropped 84 inches of rain so I mean you can imagine even I mean with the problems that Sandy created of course that was from the ocean but this is right next to the Pacific but what the big thing that happened was that 
close to uh, Chinandega, Nicaragua, which is the second largest city in Nicaragua, there was an active volcano. There's 13 active volcanoes in Nicaragua. And there were 10,000 people living around the side of that volcano, which I think for most of us it would be hard to imagine that people would choose to build their hut there. But anyway, they did. And the part of the cone of the volcano broke, and uh, it uh, caused mudslides that killed about 5,000 people. And the 5,000 that were left, uh, older people, parents, children, whatever, they were all moved to an area near the garbage dump in Chinandega. And uh, when, we, when we heard about this project, there were about 1,000 children living at the garbage dump and spending their days there. And uh, Liz and I shed a lot of tears, but uh, felt that even though we were 800 miles further away from Nicaragua, that the people in Iowa were generous and uh, we thought that they'd want to help. And so we came back here and talked to people in our club into helping. And that first year we sent uh, 1,500 boxes, and we call them shoe boxes, but they'd be like the size of a boot box. And um, so we sent those, not knowing exactly, you know, how this was going to work out, but then seven of us went to Nicaragua. And uh, we immediately saw the need and began to expand that. And I, I can tell you this, that this year we shipped 44 ton from here in Waterloo. And um, we've shipped 350 ton in the last 11 years from Waterloo, Iowa, with uh, just getting more people to help us. And so, you know, it kind of started with two of us, and now we have about 5,000 people helping us in 12 states. And we've got a woman's shelter there that uh, most of these women, they're all come there pregnant. Many of them have been raped. Many of them walk 20 to 40 miles before to come to this shelter before they have their baby. And uh, so we take a layout bag for each of those women. Three years ago, I was able to make a connection with a group called Kids Against Hunger. And uh, they do the dehydrated food. And uh, they've made a commitment to us, an ongoing commitment now, to provide us 14 to 15 ton of food a year, which is enough so that we can give every kid in school a hot meal. Now, I can tell you when we go to the dump now, which we always do because we have new people to go with us, Seldom do we see more than 40 or 50 kids there. And we started with one school with 90 kids, and we now have 12 schools with 2,200 kids. So people joining hands can do incredible things. Thanks. Thank, thank you for sure. doing that. And I think, Steve, you leave tomorrow? For the Steve, day. when does the group leave? We're leaving tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for all Be you. safe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you again. All right, and the next item on our agenda is also um, a board celebration, and this is to recognize a new uh, partner in education, and Crystal Buzz is still here. This is um, for Lincoln Elementary. We have several um, people uh, that are coming forward now to recognize that, um, but we are welcoming KBBG uh, to become a partner in ed with, uh, with Lincoln, and I know we have some other representatives, particularly from Rivers Ed Church, um, yeah. who's also a partner group. in ed well and I think the CBE group yep. also so Crystal I'll turn it over to you as we welcome KBBG radio thank you uh, we are very excited tonight as KBBG is going to be joining Lincoln Elementary uh, but I also want you to know that KBBG is also currently a partner of Cunningham Elementary and they've been a long time partner with Cunningham. They signed on with Cunningham on February 13, 1995 and so this taking on any one school is a huge undertaking but they just felt very strongly about being involved in a second school and so I'm really excited for Lincoln because this is a great gift for them to have an additional partner and with that I'm going to let Stephanie Mulhorn, the principal at Lincoln, take over with uh, recognition. Thank you. Well, I first would like to say thank you to our current partners. We have several partners, including Rivers Ed Church and the CBE group. And without them, we could not do things such as our, our community Thanksgiving dinner that we had last year. And it was a, the biggest we've ever had. We served over 700 meals. And that was the most that we've ever done. This is our third year doing that. So uh, we could not have done that without our partners. And we are excited to have KBBG join us. KB, they, are, they are a Lincoln family, so it's exciting that they're joining us um, and working with our kids. And we're hoping it that it's a mutual beneficial um, partnership. Thank you, Mrs. Mulhorn. I accept this on behalf of KBBG. Um, my name is Tina. I'm the organi organizer for Zoe's Book Club with a lot of books. And our plan, what KBBG wants to do is 
um, to collaborate along with the teachers and parents and the youth at Lincoln School to have these children develop their reading skills by participating in Zoe's book club with a lot of books. This is Zoe. She started um, producing her own show when she was five, so she knows how to run the board. She knows how to be on the air, bring the show on. She started off reading by herself. Then she had, um, then there was a young man who used to come. He was 10. He used to come, so he was a co-host. Then now she has 20 children. They don't all read at the same time. Um, the most that's been in the studio at one time is 13 children. And Zoe handles them very well. You know, you got them saying, "I want to be first. I want to be second. Why can't I be first? And she just takes control. So, um, <laughs> but these ki these kids aspire to want to read better. And I just know that that's, that can only go back to the school, you know, with the reading abilities and their, and their reading level scores being higher. But along with that, they get a, they, they're introduced to the media. So they know, I quiz them, they know about Q, they know about the mic, they know about dead air, they know about the board, they know all these other jargons that go with media. So they're, it's, a, it's a learning experience. And I thank you. And Zoe is acting shy tonight, but we know she's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen her. She's not shy. Zoe, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Zoe, you're, you're kind of a celebrity. We appreciate it. I've been hearing about you for a very, very long time in, in this show that you have, so thank you for doing that. And Zoe, I listen to you every single week, uh -huh. and I enjoy all of the boys and girls reading in your book club. Is she here, Susan? Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank it you. It must be that this is TV rather than radio because she's not shy on radio. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> well, KBBG, thank you very much thank for joining. You. We we're grateful. <laughs> and to all the other partners, to the Rivers Edge Church, thank you, and the CBE Group as well. And a number Lincoln has a number of uh, partners in Ed, and I, I think I'm sure they all do different things, but I, I think they're all very supportive. So. We appreciate um, what everyone is doing, and you're doing some wonderful things at Lincoln. So, thank you all. All right. Uh, next on our agenda is information from individuals and delegations. Um, and so, at this time, um, I would we invite anybody who wish may come and speak publicly to the board. And I would like to remind each speaker, whether you represent yourself or a group, that you have three minutes to speak during this portion of the meeting. Mrs. Arndorfer will hold up a yellow card when you have 30 seconds left and a red card when your time has expired. At that time, I will ask that you conclude your remarks immediately. Waterloo is a national leader in character counts, endeavoring at all times to promote and model the principles of trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, <laughs> fairness, caring, and citizenship. Throughout our meeting, we commit ourselves to these principles. At no time is it appropriate here to criticize the job performance of a specific employee of the district because personnel matters are confidential and must be handled through proper channels and not in a public forum. So at that time, is there anyone here that would like to address the board? And I just went through we and read the card and we lost audience. half the audience. <laughs> so I should have I asked beforehand. Um, if anybody does wish to speak, please feel free. Okay. If not, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the consent agenda. Uh, tonight, the consent agenda uh, consists of the minutes of our last regular board meeting, which was on November 12th, uh, personnel appointments and adjustments um, since our last board meeting, bills due and payable by the district but, um, since our last board meeting on the 12th, um, then the West High School speech and theater trip to New York City, and then finally, um, appointment of the labor negotiating team for the district for the upcoming labor negotiations. Are there any items that board members wish to be removed? Huh? F. F. Okay. Yeah, and that's and the D. Okay. F and D. Okay. Any others? Then I've got um, items to be removed. Are exhibit D is personnel appointments and adjustments, um, and then uh, F is the West High School speech and theater trip to New York City. So we'll get to that um, second. Um, but first, I'd ask um, that we approve the consent agenda with the exceptions of item D and F. Move to approve. Thank you. And a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And the chair votes aye. Motion carried. That takes us to Exhibit D on page 5. Uh, and the recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the personnel items as listed on page 6 of our uh, board packet. And I just wanted to... Um, Oh, oh, yeah, that's fine. Well, uh, motion to approve, Sue? Or, uh, okay, Bernice. <laughs> second? Second. Okay, thank you. And discussion? 
I just wanted to um, bring up the um, that our district um, really hires some very coveted people and um, I just wanted to thank Bev and her staff for that that um, um, we have individuals that are wanted in lots of other districts and and um, I just um, applaud efforts to hire the best people that we can and I just um, I hate to lose um, Cody Asmus um, I know that was um, uh, situation that you know for his family he's got to do the best thing and it was nothing and I think he really um, did an excellent job with the kids at East High and the um, football players and the students and um, the GPAs were raised and I just um, I commend his efforts there I want to thank him and um, and the next person will hire will do the same thing so just wanted to bring that up Thank you. And the, the, uh, today, the Waterloo Downtown Rotary Club also had the um, awards presentation for football, uh, the Doc Miller Award. Uh, last week was volleyball, this week was football, and Cody Asmus was there and, and gave mm -hmm. a very nice speech, and I think was very grateful. And he also mentioned it was, um, like he said, he was a coach and enjoyed being that, but he was a father first, and obviously living in two separate places is <laughs> difficult. So. Mm -hmm. but, but one of the legacies is that it's arguably a a more desirable job than it was a few years oh, yeah. ago because it has been turned around and mm -hmm. and they've seen some success so that's uh that's just a, an ongoing legacy and we mm -hmm. appreciate that yes Any have we started advertising for that position yet the ad has not submitted um the posting yet but they'll be getting a, com a committee together and start that lengthy process yeah. Yeah. but we're going for the the best we can get mm -hmm. okay best in the land yes. thanks we did though contact lou holtz there you go yes. 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 okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll uh, we'll end discussion on that then. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Uh, chair votes aye. Motion carried. Um, that takes us to the West High School trip. Um, and we've got Mr. Penning here uh, and a, a couple of representatives. Um, we'll, if you could come forward, we'll get the motion on the table. This is Exhibit F on page 16 of our board packet. And the uh, recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve travel to New York City the week of March 17th through the 23rd of 2013 for speech and theater students from West High. So moved. Thank you. In a second. Second. Okay. Thank you. And again, this is regarding a um, speech and theater trip during the week of spring break, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Penning. Okay. So we started planning this um, last year, and kind of the idea was put into my head that we would um, take on this large trip for our <laughs> students, and. Um, what better to expose them to culture and experience, especially in regards to theater arts and, um, and musical theater, which is what I teach, um, than to go to New York and uh, take a bunch of students on a 20-hour bus ride. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> so what we've uh, come up with is um, we've partnered with Jim Gosnell from Cedar Falls, and he has uh, planned this incredible itinerary for us. Um, 43 students are currently signed up to, uh, to attend, and seven chaperones, three of which are um, actual employees or uh, staff members, including myself. Um, the... The interesting part is that um, four students will be attending from East High. Um, they assisted us with um, some production at the beginning of the year at uh, Gallagher Blue Dorn, and so I extended the offer to them, and they have graciously accepted. And so four students from East will also be attending with uh, West High students as well. So it's this um, bridging, which is which is kind of um, incredible, and it's kind of been my goal this year as I have taken on the East theater position um, to kind of bridge the gaps between the two high schools in terms of theater arts and um, in terms of arts in general, fine arts. Um, included in the itinerary is we will be seeing three productions on Broadway 
and uh, we actually have the opportunity to have a workshop with one of the actors from the production that we see and they will take us through an improvisation workshop and a musical theater workshop as well so um, we will be going there to see the Statue of Liberty and um, <coughs> more of the tourist things but we also will be getting the educational component as well um, through those um, the viewing of the productions and then also through the the workshop that we're attending as well um, the another really um, incredible part is that we will be eating lunch in Central Park one day and Joel Wagner a recent um, West High graduate um, is actually uh, teaching at Pace University in um, New York right now and so he is bringing some um, Broadway performers to come eat lunch with us in uh, oh, Central wow. Park which is something that the students are really excited about as well um, so there's that experience the itinerary uh, the total cost for this is going to be about sixty thousand um, dollars we have raised 30 so far so we have half of the trip paid for and then we also have um, additional fundraising opportunities for the students uh, that are coming up um, noodles and company we've done um, I was going to say Texas Roadhouse but um, Longhorn what's it called? Lone Star. It's called Lone Star. There we are. Um, <laughs> and then um, we've also uh, have a bolathon planned for January 5th. So if any of you want to get a team together and uh, come out and bowl, I'd be more than supportive of that. Um, I'm a state champion bowler for any of you who don't know. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal in the state, but it's fine. Um, so I intend to... What? Algona High School is where I'm from. Um, so if you want to come out and compete with me and uh, for a good cause, just let me know. I live across the street from Pam. So, um, and then uh, we will continue our fundraising, and that's our trip. Any questions? Do you, do you know what shows you're going to? We are going to the Lion King. Mm -hmm. We are going to Newsies, and then we will also be uh, attending Guys and Dolls as a dinner theater. So. Oh, it, it just sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah yes. makes me want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let me know. Uh. Yes. Yes, there are a couple open seats. Oh. So. <laughs> Earplugs. Twenty hours on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> twenty hours there, twenty hours back. So. Well, I I read the uh, the itinerary. It what it mm -hmm. sticks out to me. I I thank you and everybody else just for taking the initiative for doing this. You don't have to do it, but um, the fact that you are and doing this extra work should be a huge benefit to those 43 kids. So I agree. Yeah, it's uh, it's a wonderful thing. So thank you for doing you know, this. Thank you. Yeah, also, it's go ahead. Lyle. It's great you can include the East kids, and I uh, sure appreciate your efforts. Uh, God's spell was great. Thank you. And uh, it, was, it was fairly well attended compared to in the yeah. past, I think, so. It was probably, what, triple attendance or something like that? About 800 people yeah. attended the show. So keep up the good work. Thank you. And Ryan, I just, I just want to say uh, I can't go into a lot of details, but uh, Ryan's an incredible leader in our school district and respected by a lot of people, including the superintendent. So thanks for everything Thank you. you do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you again. And please keep us posted on the fundraising as well with this trip as you go forward. But thanks for all you're doing. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks again. Any further discussion or questions? Mm -mm. If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And the chair votes aye. Motion carried. The next item on our agenda then is um, for information only, and this is regarding the um, graduation dates <coughs> um, for our three high schools, which seems a long ways away, but I guess we're already past Thanksgiving. So, um, and Dr. Lindemann, the dates are here listed in the, um, our program for Expo, um, which this year will be held at Central Middle School okay. on uh, Wednesday, the 20, May 22nd at 6.30 p.m., West High at the McLeod Center on Thursday. May 23rd at 6.30 p.m. And then finally East High at the McLeod Center, you and I on May 24th. Um, and I guess the only change was on Expo, we're changing that. So it'll be at the auditorium. At, uh, yeah, at, and at the Central. dates are corresponding to last year. And okay, we had yes. um, a couple people review those to make sure that they fit in. Um, Mary Meyer looked at them. Willie looked at them. And um, I think they're going to work. Okay, great. It's always, it's always 
my favorite time of the year. It's always so fun to see the students. And it means we're done for the school year. The, uh, the, the sound there is, and it has nothing to do with their sound system. It's just, it's a hockey rink. <laughs> and it's... Yeah. And yeah, Shanley got cold last year is the, is the main reason we, <laughs> we moved. It. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I guess the, the ice is still up. I I think I, I read in, I read this in the paper, but I I think they're they might be redoing the sound too. I don't know. I think if yeah. That's and it, it might be out of commission. I don't know. It yeah. it is, and it's 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 a pretty big venue for a fairly small group. So I think this will be more intimate. And yeah, they're kind of lost in it yeah. last year. Like <laughs> and I was teasing about Shanley and Nicole. <laughs> well, uh, May, the last week of May will be here before we know it. So second to the last week of May will be here before we know it. So. Any further questions or discussion? Okay, if not, um, the next item on our agenda is Exhibit I on page 22 um, regarding the uh, School Budget Review Committee um, application from our district. Uh, the recommended motion is that the Board of Education authorize the administration to submit the SBRC application form to the School Budget Review Committee requesting 2012-2013 modified allowable growth funding totaling $831,970 to be funded by 2013 to 2014 cash reserve levies. Can we get that motion on the table? So moved. Thank you. In a second. Second. Okay. In discussion, this is all very technical school budget um, mm -hmm. information. Uh, but Michael Coughlin, if you could give us some background information on this. Sure. This is an annual review <coughs> that we do with the school budget review committee. And what it really does is it addresses the issue of um, enrollment cost because we get money from students from the year before <clears throat> the budget the year that we are in. So in 12-13, it's really the budget from the fall of 11. So things can change quite a bit. And if when we get to 12, and even though the budget has already been set, the tax rate and so on, um, we may have increased enrollment and we do in this case if you look at the <clears throat> diagram on 23 uh, we went up 85 85.4 students so this this uh, approval by the board through the SBRC uh, allows the district to get the authority in the year that this increase comes into the district we don't get the actual cash but we get the authority, which again is the most important thing. And then we back that up with um, cash reserve levy when we do our 14 budget. So that's one part of it. If we just have an uh, increase in certified enrollment, uh, the middle part is open enrollment out. If we have uh, more students going out in the current year than if they weren't on the count from the year before, um, but all of those situations only came up with 72 students and we had a increase of 85 so that cancels each other out you can't get the authority for both so whatever which one is higher we get the ad the additional authority for that um, and then the third part is dealing with the ELL or the English language uh, learners program and it's the whole calculation of how many students that we have that go beyond the four years of normal uh, support for the ELL program. Um, and that's really not known until the fall, until the kids actually come. Um, so that's calculated to say uh, they've been here for four years of services or have gotten services in another district and came here with two left and had that and so a, a, a culmination of four years and we are still um, serving those kids in our program so uh, it is 0.22 percent weighting and that's normally what we get for ELL students and this is another uh, actual 1213 adjustment to our authority so we have the resources to serve those students and then both of these amounts the 800 and um, 31,000 almost 34 32,000 uh, is then included in our cash reserve levy for the 14 
uh, budget. So we get the authority, it helps our unspent balance, and then we back it up with cash in the following budget year. So, so this doesn't change what's currently been set for a cash reserve levy. Correct. It does convert it from cash reserve to spending authority. Yes. But you anticipate you will propose this 831000 as an additional cash reserve levy for next year. I will propose it, and by your action tonight, um, according to the strategic plan of going after all the authority that we can, your approval of this is saying you will support it with cash reserve when the taxes are up next April. But this is not, we're not voting it now, we're raising the, uh, excuse me, it's not affecting the tax right now, it's the, no. uh, really with the, the authority, the analogy that's used is that it, you're raising the, uh, the authority is essentially <coughs> similar to the credit limit, but I've never liked right. that analogy because it's not the like property a tax card rate is already set for the yeah, current year we're and not borrowing. Yeah, um, this won't be until uh, the tax rate is approved for 14 in uh, next April 15th okay. when you take that action yeah. for the following year. And I think but it doesn't really lock us into approving that because no. there's no harm in approving this. You just if you don't have the cash to spend, even though you have the authority, you still can't spend it, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 But it, it's allowable growth. I think I heard uh, recently that Iowa is the only state in the country that has allowable growth. This dual, or, or this dual system. Yeah. yeah. Where you set a floor and a ceiling. Yep. That. Okay. Um, it's sometimes uh, I. It's what the toughest topic I've ever tried to learn. School funding in Iowa. Um, okay. Any other questions? Mm -mm. Okay, if not, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Uh, and the chair votes aye. Motion carried. The last item on our agenda is um, for information only, and this is monthly internal financial information from the district. Um, it's in our board packet on Exhibit J, pages 24 through uh, 30. And with that, Mr. Coughlin, we'll turn it over to you again to uh, go through our monthly financial information. I'm going to try to keep this short because you can tell my voice is half gone. So um, just to review the um, reports that you normally see, 25 and 26 are dealing with the actual cash flow in and out of the bank accounts uh, for each month listed separately and then gives you the the year-to-date totals of what we have in the bank at the end of October um, it would be in the bank and then also in the um, the holding fund for the QSCB so we have that uh, those funds being um, reserved as well um, on 27 is the summary of the revenues um, by the general areas property tax state aid and then local state and federal dollars um, showing we have about 25 percent of our revenues in for the year through October and the expenditures are running at about 21 and a half percent moving at about the rate that that uh, is normal for this time of year. Um, then on 28 is a three-part report that deals with uh, the general fund again, the expenditures, and it shows by function uh, over on the left-hand side of what is being spent for each of the functions, and then those are all broke down by salaries, benefits, uh, and so on, coming to the same 21.5%. The middle um, table, <coughs> Uh, just reports the total budget that we expect to spend in all of those different areas uh, throughout the year. So if you want to do some comparing of where we are in particular programs mm -hmm. or particular functions, you can relate the top one, the top spending year to date through the budget um, in the middle portion. Mm -hmm. And then as a comparison, 
of what we spent as entirely for 2011-12. That's the table at the bottom, so you can really look at three different um, viewpoints of where we are at on the 12-13 budget. On page 29 is a breakdown of the revenue and expenditure activity for the management fund, uh, physical plant and equipment levy, PEPL, and then the capital projects. Um, a couple of them are showing uh, negative balances. I'm not showing um, the, the PEPL one is just a little little bit to the negative uh, and that's a bank account that includes the general fund so it's supported uh, with that. The capital project fund uh, is the one that we have been um, supporting um, the overage of the building project at Orange until sales tax money comes in uh, over the long term and um, it is saving us the amount of, of borrowing again short term and the cost of interest and and uh, selling the bonds and so on so as long as the general fund can keep up with that um, we may <clears throat> as you're looking at the charts on 30 uh, the top chart over in April uh, we may get to a point again where we have to do some short-term borrowing like we did uh, in September October um, but we'll just have to see how fast the how fast the project at Orange gets done and the bills are turned in um, but it will come pretty close um, if it does go past the capability of the general fund it should be just for a short time until property tax comes in again in mid-April um, and then the other charts are showing basically what uh, where we're at on the uh, activity of the management fund the sales tax fund and the PEPL fund and the just since you haven't seen this chart these charts for too long um, instead of doing them all together I broke them apart so you can kind of see the individual activity uh, and the the line um, across the whole chart is the um, actual trend line from 2011-12 so you can see where we're at so for the general fund um, we're sitting at about ten million dollars for last for uh, this year last year it was almost twenty million uh, but about four million is being borrowed out to the capital projects fund and we are a little down from last year um, just because of uh, several issues of um, cash reserve not being as high as it was in past years and there's several components that go along with that um, but we would be pretty close to the level of activity where we were a year ago if we weren't borrowing out the money to uh, the sales tax so from an accounting standpoint you do subtract from the general fund we just show it as as uh, money borrowed out to another fund we're not this the the chart is what's in the bank okay so but what's in the general fund right it's not in the, ba the would balance include is that by that it just have receivables from the other fund correct okay and then my other question is on page 27 the property tax year-to-date totals looks like 13.8 million and the budget was 31 uh, shouldn't we have received half don't we receive property tax in two? Depends on how it's paid. We get what's turned in. I'd have to look at a year ago and see wh what that percentage was. But you don't, but the 31 isn't in jeopardy. The budgeted amount isn't in jeopardy. No, it's not. Okay. It's just a timing issue. Meaning it, it, some might trickle in and that was paid in yeah we October don't just get it twice a year we get some every month oh okay so okay. yeah some of it does trickle in and presumably that'll get to 50 percent before the second installment oh it definitely okay, okay. all right any further questions any discussion mm -hmm. 
Coffin, thank you very much. Um, yep, and that concludes the uh, action items on our agenda. Um, if there's nothing further, we'll have a superintendent's report with Dr. Norris. Well, I wanted to um, uh, use this opportunity to thank you for attending the uh, UEN meetings, uh, board members, and and the IASB School Board Association meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago in Des Moines. Um, and for those that uh, are not aware, um, the, the topics that you addressed in a two-day period were significant. Um, so at one big meeting, the board addressed uh, legislation, legislative initiatives, um, including some of the ed reform topics, and then spent quite a bit of time discussing funding uh, for Iowa and for the future. Um, you then attended sessions where you talked about student achievement and even um, Lincoln Elementary School shared was our success story. The, the uh, 15, 16 urban districts got together and presented uh, success stories and you all attended different ones of those, uh, bringing back good ideas that were uh, taking place all over Iowa. Uh, we heard a very impressive speaker talk about uh, the infusion of technology. Um, we also talked considerably about the global achievement gap, which is often referred to also as the skills gap. Um, that was, these are very, I, I guess the point I'm making, this isn't a typical meeting, it was a pretty weighty uh, two days. And you also, many of you attended sessions on urban education that I thought was refreshing for this conference. And so just wanted to thank all of you for going and, and spending all the time to set through all of those sessions. I think we all came back with some good ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Norris. Yeah, it was a very good week. Um, I think a helpful week for everybody. Um, with that, we're now on to information from um, um, board members, and I don't remember where we started last time. Uh, I'll start with <laughs> Shanley McNally. <laughs> Tomorrow and Wednesday mark the kickoff in our community to the Blue Zones Project, and I know some of us will be participating in some of those things, and our schools will be as well, but I just think it's a great way for our community to embrace this idea, and I urge people to, to get involved and um, get moving. So, Thank you, Shanley. And Sue Flynn. And I just want to say that in this um, season of Thanksgiving and thankfulness, um, encourage everyone to thank a teacher, thank a principal, thank a custodian. And um, those people are really important, and give them thanks. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Bernice Richard. Uh, just to uh, piggyback on what Dr. Norris said, uh, the UEN session, the format, I don't know who came up with that idea, but it was different, and I really enjoyed listening to other districts and mm -hmm. what other schools are doing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great format to use. Right. Thank you, Bernice. And Andrea Sparks. Well, I'm just thinking also about uh, just coming off Thanksgiving and four days of uh, vacation, and, and looking at after this week, it's another three weeks, and then we have holidays. So I'm just thinking of the students, and you really have to focus on the next four weeks because I'm quite sure there'll be a lot to do in the classrooms. So just keep, keep going, keep moving. <laughs> yes, thank you, Andrea. And Mike Kinchy. Nothing at this time. Right. Thank you. And Lyle Schmidt. Um, just one thing. I, I mentioned earlier I went to, was able to go to God's Billy's High, but I went with a group that uh, a number of people had never been in that building before. And uh, they were very impressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only, you know, the polished maple floors that are, that are just sparkle, and then the new auditorium, the revised auditorium, so they came away with kind of a wow. So I thought oh, that yeah. was uh, that, that was good. It's a beautiful building, and that our auditorium looks fantastic. Yeah, it's very different than West High's auditorium, but it, they're both different but great. Yeah. Thank you, Lyle. And that um, 
should conclude our meeting. Our next board meeting will be in two weeks on Monday, December 10th at 6 o'clock p.m. here in the boardroom. And if there's nothing further, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Thank you. And a second. And a second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, um, nay. Uh, motion, uh, Chair votes aye. Motion carried. We're adjourned. Thank you all.